All right, well, let me see how about continuing this a little bit more and to see what kind of path we're gonna go, if we're truly gonna go down that uh, Keiichi the Murderer path, which... Can I say that this is the first time that I'm having a protagonist uh, be a murderer? That I'm following a murderer? Hmm. I do remember one specific girl that I followed, which ended up being a uh, culprit at some point, but I will live with that doubt. Emergency, oh boy. More documents when it comes to the ports, June 18, 1983. Oh, this is actually the last report. Abuse issues regarding Satoko Hojo, urgent. The proposed that Satoko Hojo must be taken into immediate custody based on the items below. 1. Family situation. Life with the adoptive father who recently returned to Inazawa has already turned disastrous. And she is currently subject to unendurable physical and mental abuse from the father. 2. Child Consultation Center's response. A child probation officer was dispatched yesterday on the 17th from the Prefecture Welfare Office. But because of the 77 case, it changed to continued coaching and cautionary action. The 77 case. Okay, that's... That's uh, like two years before the damn incident, and three years before the parents died. Unfortunately, the consultation office had, had, does not properly understand the situation. 3. Status of concerned child. God damn it. You... I wonder if it's the same probation officer. Like, they know Satoko personally as well. Child already appears to be suffering from an outbreak of something close to neurosis or manic depression. If her unstable pubescent mind is negatively stimulated by stress, it will put her development of a healthy body and mind at risk. This cannot be allowed to continue from a humane standpoint. 4. Allegations made to the family court. We propose, based on the above items, that Satoko Hojo should immediately be taken into protective custody. She should be secured temporarily under emergency allegations to the family court under Article 28. We request emergency coordination between all rel related agencies. My god. Yes! Yes! Do that! Why aren't you doing that? God damn it. Children with special needs. General D23 number 44. What was it like 43 before? 1977. Child name. Satoko Hojo. Residence. Hinamazawa Village. Shishibone. Consultation circumstances. Telephone SOS from child of child abuse. Abuse situation. Child claims she is being physically abused by her adoptive father. Family structure. Marks abusers. Adoptive father. Real mother. Older brother. Child in question. Note. Adoptive father and real mother enter family registry in 19... Something, something. It's probably recent, too, in comparison. Probably 1976, maybe? It's like sometimes they hide these numbers, sometimes they don't. I mean, the child is the daughter of the mother's previous husband. Which, again, I questioned this, uh, like, in the first chapter, I think. Maybe, uh, maybe it was for the sake of... Murder mystery solving, but I've been told that it's not really like there is really a particular special reason for hiding these numbers, especially since they actually reveal that the report was done in 1977. So they are hiding like other years as well. No, I don't know. The child is the daughter of the mother's previous husband. Child consultation center response. On the day of the child's telephone consultation, the center called the child's school and asked for our situation. On that day, the child welfare officer on duty visited the child's house and conducted an interview. The adoptive father is sincerely listened to instruction and agreed to take child raising workshops, workshops in the city from now on. And like the father tried his best to the point where he even agreed to uh, be a part of the program because he was doing poorly in his eyes. As part of the suggested coaching, the center will continue to observe the situation. 
other notes. As a result of numerous counseling sessions at the city's education consultation office regarding a child, we learned there was a high possibility the cause of the child's excessive distrust towards her adoptive father was the result of a lack of communication. The abuse she claimed hadn't actually taken place. She had made a false report to distance herself from her adoptive father. Below is a note written in pencil by the person on duty at the time. The problem appeared to be more with the daughter. Chief Investigator F of the city's education consultation office said that most of her stories of abuse were likely fabrications. They decided to shift the focus of their coaching to the child. Be cautious not to take everything the child says as truth. Alright, well... What Chie and uh, Marika said apparently was true. Which, I had no doubt. I... I'm not... I wasn't thinking that they would actually lie about some stuff, some stuff like that, but yeah, it is confirmation, I guess. All right, Keiichi, let's see how we're gonna deal with this situation for the rest of this. Mion and the others have been to set up for the Watanagashi festival or something. They invited me along, but I refused. Of course I did. How could they be taking it easy and setting up for a festival in this situation? Mion had a lot of nerve. Poof. You know, Cage is, um, he is quite something in this, uh, in this chapter, that is for sure. He has been quite aggressive, which, you know, on one hand, pretty understandable with, with the Satoko situation, but still. Like, he doesn't think much about the, the other girls, too. Like... They have been so, like, he has been so careless about the others. The first thing I did when I got back was take a shower. Not because I wanted to wash off sweat. It was because I wanted to be even calmer. I only understood this. But killing that man would be so very easy. The really hard thing would be not getting arrested for it. So we could get our peaceful days back. Yeah, you know, that is true. I mean... Not that I agree with Keiichi doing this in the first place, but the idea would be for Keiichi to do this without getting caught, because what would be the freaking point? Like, I mean, of course, the uncle will die, so Satoko would get some level of peace, but at the end of the day, if Keiichi gets caught, then that would make Satoko sad. So Keiichi would not want that, because I thought about it. I realized it wasn't easy. Japan's police force has the highest arrest rate in the world. In 1983, that is, I would need to deceitfully pull off the perfect crime, and it couldn't be a half-hearted attempt. Still, it wasn't 100%. Ah yes, also obligatory uh, pointing my finger at the police for being incompetent in every murder mystery story. Ha <laughs> ha! Even the best police force in the world couldn't have a 100% arrest rate. I've read a lot of articles on trials where people brought up on false charges. At court, they consider whether the charges are false or not, but figuring out the real criminal is entirely out of scope. And that meant perfect crimes did exist. In fact, perfect crimes were sort of like works of art. Yeah, I, I, I know somebody who... Who thinks of it like that? When it comes to Yumineko, they could even be respected and revered. You just have to look at the inundation of mystery novels everywhere throughout history. They dealt with all sorts of difficult to solve incidents, evolving secret rooms and alibis and stuff, but they all wanted to show one thing. They wanted to show the beauty of a perfect crime. There was something divine in the flawlessness of the world perfect. Yes, perfect crimes were skills of the gods. And in that sense, the serial freak deaths they were calling the curse of Weashiro Kusama. I understood. They must have been the works of gods. Each one appeared to have been resolved, but I couldn't stop it from happening every year. Yeah, skills belonging only to gods. Those are perfect crimes. You know, also, this is pretty interesting, because 
Of course, me being a detective right over here, I look at Higurashi as a detective story as well, you know, thinking about the murders of, of uh, the previous years and such in these first chapters. But I think this is actually the first time that we're, we're actually uh, quoting like murder mysteries and, you know, actual ways of murdering people. Except this time we're looking at it from the perspective of a possible future murderer in the form of Keiichi Maiba. So, huh. And I will be setting up my own crime before I show some a series of perfect crimes four years in the running. If I were to put it boldly, I was challenging a god. Foolhardiness would be needed to make the decision. But I needed to be calm, cool, colder than ice to put that plan together. Kill him like a flame, but as systematic as ice. Starting now, I need to retain both of those ideas within me. Modeling my crime after a mystery novel wasn't actually a bad thing to focus on. Which, you know, we we're talking about this, but at the same time, Kichi, have you ever read like any murder mysteries? Like, at least? Like, you know, you have ascended to godhood, but I don't know if you still know how to create a perfect crime. I don't know. Sometimes kidnappings involving disturbing original methods that made it into the newspaper were used as the basis for novels after the person was arrested. So like that made it into the news. Day and night, for a very long time, mystery novel authors polished and refined their most fantastic artistic crimes. Imitating that could be a shortcut to planning the perfect crime in a short period of time. Of course, I haven't read enough mystery novels to act all high and mighty about them. What is that that I'm hearing? Do you guys hear that? I, I hear like a jingle. Yeah, it's like, oh my god, yeah. I'm hearing like Christmas, ju Christmas jingles, aren't I? That's lovely. Merry Christmas, everyone, and a Happy New Year. The one who really liked mystery novels was my mom. Oh. She'd re read every well-known mystery novel from overseas, from past and present. Every time she watched mystery shows, she would always criticize them as having cheap tricks or being poorly thought out. I wonder what the perfect crime would mean to her. Oh my god. <laughs> okay. So, scratch what I said before. Maybe Keiichi has inherited some of her... Uh, his mother's uh, ways of uh, doing murder mysteries and thinking and, you know, love and appreciation for murder mysteries in the first place. Oh my god! It's Asumu from Uyumineko! <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. これまでの推理小説の中で母さんが一番よくできたと思った完全犯罪うん。母さんって結構たくさん推理小説を読んでるでしょ。I can imagine. Keiichi and Bella are their siblings. What? So you know, Kuashi cannot tell me. So you're a young girl, Tanoshino. Hajime Karatoriku, Shetara, Tanoshimi, and Nakunachawa. It wasn't like I was asking for my own amusement. She was deflecting question, so I will somehow butter her up first and draw out an answer. So, ne, Yoku dekita, sweetie, so set.結構どれもこれもいろんな魅力があってどれが面白かったとは言いにくいけどしいてあげれば母さんの好きな小説のタイトルが知りたいんじゃないよ母さんが一番下を巻いた完全トリックが知りたいんだよ本当に完全なトリ
I'm gonna I would say that even in Mineko there are there is never gonna be like a mystery that I'm not gonna solve that it's unsolvable. I guess you could say that there would be that situation where, of course, the how done it and the why done it uh, was solved, and we have saved some victims. But in the end, the culprit would still escape scot free by the end of the story. Like, a balance between a good ending and a bad ending. Not necessarily a bad ending for the culprit, where the detective completely fails. No, there will be some silver lining to it in order to make it a satisfactory story. But at the same time, having like the murderer escape scot-free. That's why you have like a, um, you know, like a rival. Uh, like a, uh, like a sort of rival that escapes no matter what. That it's not always about a specific culprit that is specific to that one book. No, there will be like a reoccurring villain that would challenge the detective in that sense. Soka, so was I being too simplistic? A mystery novel was basically a game. They were written so that you can get to the goal, so that you could solve them. <laughs> you know, again, reminder, this is Higurashi, before the Mineko. I love that this uh, this part right over here, it is basically Yuri Kishi just uh, preparing his hands for Yumineko right over here a little bit. But I couldn't use something so optimistic. He needed to be the be-all end-all of tricks so that we could, without a doubt, return to our old lives. Mom looked at me intellectually and grinned impishly. I had never gone to read it. But apparently one time, a long time ago, Mom had written her own mystery novel and submitted it for some mystery novel award. Apparently she was really into it. How done it? Why done it? Who done it? Alright. Yeah, true. Murders uh, usually happening at, at the beginning of the story. Because, you know, you need the time to set up everything for the mystery to be solved. So that would mean that the murder has to happen like very early on. Because if you were to have the, like the murder happen like, like at the end, whereas... Uh, the rest of the first uh, parts of the story will be just character interactions and such. If the murder happens like at the end, there won't be that much time to offer like all the evidence. Actually, mm, yeah, I guess it kind of depends. Like preparation evidences that you would notice throughout the story. And like at the end the murder happens and then you would immediately go into the let's solve this together phase. Like, in the last part, I guess. Because usually you would be like, uh, oh, the, f the murder happens first, like at the beginning, and then throughout the story you find, like, the evidences. Whereas, the opposite way around, you would find the evidence before the murder even happens? Hmm. Has there ever been like an example like that? I don't know. Hmm. But yeah, either way. So, nani mo okora nai kara jiken ni mo nara nai. Tantei mo yobare nai kara sui ri mo nai. Unless the te detective was already there without being called. Sui ni ga nai nara kaiketsu mo nai. Tsumari. これが究極の完全犯罪。え、ちょ、ちょっと待って。もう一度説明してくれるかな。My mom just told me something absurd. She was saying it so smoothly too. 
So I kind of tune her out, but... She says something extremely important just now. Alright. Mm. Okay. So basically, which, like, if we were to apply to what Keiichi wants to do, it would be the equivalent of uh, trying to make it look as if uh, the uncle actually disappeared yet again. Well, disappeared in the sense that, well, either we make it, uh, like, like, we disguise it as if uh, the uncle just disappeared from Yonozawa again in the sense that he moved out to Okinomiya or some other country, but nah, that wouldn't work with the police. They would try to find him no matter what. So, best thing to do would be to have it be disguised as Oyashiro-sama's curse. Everybody will think of it as disappearance in similar fashion to previous years. So, yeah. Tsumari. うん、例えばよ。誰も立ち入らない深い森の奥でおじいさんが一人暮らしをしているとする。うん。そのおじいさんがある日、斧で殺されました。ちなみに犯人は、うん、じゃあ、おじいさんの息子ね。おじいさん
with uh, like the Watanagashis and such, with these deaths that happen every single year, the police would try to to find the uncle, like no matter what, to determine that the whether it is another victim of uh, Watanagashi or not. It's not as if uh, we can have uh, Tepe safely hidden in the forest for like months without anybody trying to find him or anything like that. So. I don't know, it's kind of hard. So, that means, Unless we hide him like really, really well. Why am I even talking about this as if I'm agreeing to this kind of plan? Because if the incident doesn't happen, no one will be afraid ジエンド。どうこんな感じで。す、すごいじゃないか。それ、ちゃんとした取り組だよ。でも、娯楽小説にはならないわね。推理小説は所詮娯楽者。完全犯罪の指南書にはなり得ないんだから。I was trying hard to talk cheerfully to fool her, but inside I was excited. Special tools, strange geography, mysterious drugs, traps involving huge sums of cash. None of them were needed for perfect crimes. The important thing was that there wasn't a beginning. As long as the incident didn't come to light, it'll be fine. Speaking broadly, if I could kill him without anyone finding out, and dispose of the corpse somewhere no one could find, it would basically already be a perfect crime. Of course, if someone up and vanished one day all of a sudden, people would get suspicious. But that didn't apply to this man. Last year, after their aunt died, he ran away from the village in fear of Oyashiro sama When the night of Watanagashi came around again, everyone would have to think that he ran away in fear again. Oh. Hmm. I guess so. I was thinking that people would suspect that people were suspecting him as another victim but no i guess more than anything else everybody would think that he just ran away in fear and this fear would be no different i mean yeah when you think of it like that there will be a pattern if he did this sort of thing like last year making people think that he ran away in fear this year it would be no different if we were to disguise it like that I mean, he had been living with a lover of his own, of his in town. No matter what he felt like when he vanished, no one would be suspicious. People hated him after all. No one would care where he went if he disappeared. Yeah, I mean, not to mention that there is that hate uh, aspect of it. That he is part of the whole Joes in the first place, and at least the Sonozakis, they are not very fond of the whole Joes. And especially Tepe, I... I I am pretty sure that Tepe has enemies. And he doesn't seem like the most sociable person, so people wouldn't be so fond of him. Therefore, people wouldn't think much about him in the first place. So if he disappeared, it will be just what ifs. When I thought about it like that, it got easier and easier to imagine killing him. There was no point in thinking inside my house anymore. I left, getting my bike out of the garage. For now, it didn't matter where I was going. I just rode through the wind, trying to calm my excitement by feeling the cool air on my body. Where I'd kill him, how I'd do it, what time, and how to dispose of the corpse. If I just had those four things, I could get a good plan going. I was so surprised at how little there was to decide that I shivered. I've been completely prepared to build this humongous plan over a really long period of time. But if I could just get these little things in order, I could put it into motion. Today was Saturday. I would have to kill him on the night of Watanagashi. So as long as I was standing in for Oyashiro sama, I only had 24 hours remaining. Satoko, just hang on. For 24 more hours. I can't even imagine having to suffer for even more. But please, hold out 
for a little longer. I know you can't even last another second. I know that. But please, just hold out. Your Nini will save you for sure. Outside, it was still early enough for the cicadas to be crying. Higurashi no nakukoro ni. Early afternoon, evening was still a long way off. I looked at the sky. At some point, it had gotten cloudy. Come to think of it, as I left the house, I heard on the TV that the weather forecast was calling for a chance of rain on Sunday. Hello there. New song. The sky was the color of lead. If I heard a little bit of thunder, I definitely have expected a sudden evening show. My first destination was school. Before explaining why I was going there, I need to explain what method of killing. I needed to explain what method for killing that man I had decided upon. I decided the most suitable death, the one I needed to give him, was the same as last year's curse, the same as the punishment their aunt had received. Being beaten to death. Wouldn't beating him to death be somewhat unreliable? You may think that stabbing him with a blade would be more reliable. But this was something I had chosen after a lot of thought. You just need to think realistically. The law, it prohibited carrying any blade longer than 10 centimeters, I think. So the blades available to me. Even the longest ones were still limited to things shorter than a ruler. I probably understand how tricky it would be with such a short reach to go up against an opponent that might fight back. In that case, a weapon with more reach, like a staff, would be far more dangerous. It might not be quite as inherently lethal, but since you could just keep hitting the guy until you kill him, the end result was the same. So, what's a staff like deadly weapon? terrifyingly powerful, and also eminently poor By this point, you should immediately think of a metal baseball bat. I don't need to explain how terrifying a metal baseball bat can be as a weapon. A special note is the fact that you can carry one around in broad daylight, and not be thought of as suspicious. Um, oh, I beg to differ, given what happened in chapter 1, but and just those two points would have been enough to choose a metal bat for my weapon. But there was one more reason for choosing a metal bat in particular. I will speak about it later. At the school that Saturday, my classmates were still having fun, playing in the schoolyard. I could show up there and it would be the same as always, so nobody would think I'm suspicious. Getting my hands on a weapon without looking suspicious was actually a factor I couldn't ignore. I didn't normally play baseball, so if I went to a sports store looking for a metal bat, you would definitely be suspicious. I can't let there be a beginning to the story, so I needed to be really careful even about that. Then I left school, at a location at which my appearance wouldn't be suspicious, I would acquire the weapon. I checked inside the classroom through the window, but of course, there was nobody there. The only students who would stay in there were me and the others, who were doing club activities. Without us, the classroom after school was just an empty, unused room. Without glancing around nervously, as if I had just gone to get something and forgot, I casually went in the entrance. It looked like the teacher was busy with paperwork in the teacher's lounge. I didn't see her in the hallway. Naturally, yet quickly as a shadow, I entered the classroom. The empty room was full of strange, stagnant air that you couldn't feel normally. An empty classroom, with nobody here. Maybe while no one was around, the discs creep up out of their own accord, licking the floors clean of dirt. Keiichi, why are you thinking about sentient discs? If I suddenly stepped into a place like that, would the discs, in their surprise, fly at me, crush my bones, and eat me alive? Oh my god. Don't make me think of that one part in Fahrenheit where the furniture would eventually come at you in like the apartment. Jesus. 
バカバカしい。I felt regret at wasting valuable thinking time on stupid delusions. The students' lockers were lined up in the back of the classroom. The one I was looking for wasn't my own. It was a forbidden locker. One I had accidentally discovered one day. あった宝城間違いない If one person has one locker, then why would only Satoko have two? I'd made a fuss about it once. After that, I learned it was Satoshi's locker, and he had the same last name as her. Okay. Of course, even though it was a locker for a student no longer here, looking inside it was still a shameless act. But one time, I let my curiosity get the better of me and took a peek inside. Inside, he was average and worthless. At the time, I hadn't been interested. So until now, I'd forgotten what had been in it. But now that I had, there I say it, awakened, I remembered the thing that had been there. Which, you know, it made me think back, as much as I don't want to think back about it, it made me think back during the breakdown that Satoko had. It said that there was a cleaning supply locker that Satoko hit when she was having a breakdown. And then later, Rena came in and just、uh, made the cleaning supply locker fall down and then just grabbed Satoko. It kind of made me think that that was the locker that belonged to Satoshi before, in the sense that it made me think that、uh, that particular locker had made Sato- Sako- like it made Satoko have even more of a breakdown. And Rena like, grabbed that locker and、uh, threw it down. In order to hopefully calm Satoko even more. So it kind of made me think of that. Stripe! I opened the locker, and a stench of mold and sweat wafted out, like a gym storehouse that hadn't been cleaned in weeks. My face puckered up at the stench. Well, I looked for it. Yes. It's Christmas time. Satoshi was on Coach's baseball team. Inside the locker was a Hinamizawa fighter's uniform. And it. The one Satoshi used. The metal bat. Yes, and this was the reason I wanted to choose this bat. And this murder would be carried out by me. But this wasn't originally my role, it was Satoshi's. But I would stand in for him and call myself Satoko's Nini. It was one of the rules for standing in for him. You know, I guess we can go for another parallelism between、uh, Satoshi and、uh, Keiichi in the sense that it kind of makes you think that maybe it was Satoshi who killed the aunt last year. And what happened.、Uh, Uh, last year would be no different than what、uh, Keiichi is planning right over here. Like, Satoshi would just、uh, go after the aunt and kill them so that Satoko would have peace and then just disappear. But if that were the case, however, the question would be how, why, why did Satoshi leave the uncle alive in the first place? Unless he knew that eventually the uncle would disappear uh,、um, once uh, the aunt died. Unless he knew that.、Mm. I reached for the milk bat and grasped it firmly. It was light, and yet its tip had enough lip, its tip had enough. Heft in it, enough to easily imagine the horror if I brought it down with all my might. Satoshi, I'll give you one last chance to save your sister. Lend me your strength. You are a coward, but I will stand in for you. So if you still care even a little about her, you will lend me your strength. There is no more suitable weapon in the world for putting that man to death. Then you're bad. Now, I just need to figure out where to hide it. 
tomorrow, before the act, I would just stop by the school and grab it. Because I couldn't ignore the possibility someone would see me bringing it home and thinking it was strange. But if I left it here, there wouldn't be a problem. Plus, tomorrow was Sunday. Not only that, it was the day of the biggest festival in the whole village. Yeah, I guess so. Nobody would, uh, like, have any occupation with the school, especially during festival day. Like, nobody would come here. I assume. Nobody would be coming to school. We left out the entrance and went over to a construction vehicle parked nearby. We had been warned by our teacher not to touch it just for laughs. So none of the kids would come near the vehicle either. They wouldn't. Because if she found out they touched it, they'd be in huge problem. I quietly hid it in the shadow of the vehicle. The chances of someone operating the vehicle tomorrow were slim to none. Because tomorrow was Sunday. Government workers had the day off. And from what my classmates had said, the thing had been left here for years now. Machines that haven't been moved in years, and you can now just suddenly start them up again. So it was almost definitely fine in this case. Hmm. Kinda makes me think, uh, like, what would be the thing that is gonna screw Keiichi in this? Was it that someone's actually gonna come to school tomorrow for some particular reason? Are they actually gonna check the vehicle for some reason? Hmm. The sunlight was piercingly hot. My head grew faint for a moment. Had the heat been this harsh for the entire day? A moment of dull thoughts like this was a moment of carelessness. I gave myself a couple of hits on the head and looked around wearily. Okay. Next, how to dispose of the corpse? That's the. That's the question! That's the question! That is most definitely the question. Yeah, I think I'm just gonna sit this one out and uh, see what Cage is thinking right over here. This is gonna be even more of an observer on this one. I'm not gonna comment too harshly on uh, Keiichi being a future murderer and such. It's... Uh, I'm just curious. Disposing of the corpse. The ultimate way not to create a beginning was to not let the corpse be found. It was even more important than killing him. Thinking on it vaguely, the first thing that came to mind was the swamp. Onigafuchi, the dreadful bottomless swamp revered even now, that appeared on the legends of Onigafuchi village. Yes, the swamp called Onigafuchi was here first, and then the village took its name to become Onigafuchi village. In other words, this swamp was the origin of Onigafuchi village. No one, no matter who it was, would float back to the surface of this bottomless swamp. Everyone would be swallowed down into the land of the demons below the earth. That was how the stories went. If I was trying to copy where Shirosama's curse, then I felt that theory demanded I discard the remains and the weapon into the swamp. But they may have said it's bottomless, but I didn't actually know. And people say large creatures like humans produce a lot of gas when they rot, granting a lot of buoyancy. It was why using fairly heavy objects to hold people down didn't work. Come to think of it, with the curse the year before last, Marika-chan's mother drowned herself in the swamp, and the criminal behind the dismemberment that went missing on the year of the first curse too. It was rumored he tried to discard the body in the swamp and accidentally drowned in it. I had never heard of the corpse coming back up or them finding it. That is true. Then, should I choose to discard the corpse there too? I don't know, Johnny. Maybe we should test it out? I could discard the weapon there. And then, for example, if our uncle came out on a motorcycle and attacked, it would be convenient to get rid of the bike too. I knew that Satoko's uncle generally used a motorcycle for transportation. But as for a corpse... After a lot of worrying, 
I decided to not to discard the corpse in the swamp. The drowning, suicide, and accident were both rumors. Nobody knew if they'd actually happened. Hmm. Keiichi... He is certainly thinking, that's for sure. He is definitely thinking carefully about this entire situation. There were no lack of false rumors about the drawing suicide in anyway. And it was possible the murderer hadn't drowned there and was still on the run. And that meant no one had ever confirmed the corpse being dropped there and then not coming back up. Then what would I do with the body? I thought it might be interesting to go with the first instant, cutting to pieces and hide him. But the preparation and work for dismembering a human body would be difficult given the amount of time I had. Yeah. Not to mention that you're just a little child with a childish body, like, not as developed. It would be quite hard to do something like that, just by yourself. There have been instances where it has been said that multiple people would uh, would work on the dismemberment, both in the first year during the Bennett Dam protest and what we heard recently with the last victim that we've seen, like on the restraining table, and a minimum two people were needed to to make the torture happen slash death happen. Hmm. I mean, it would take time, but. Hmm. With that out of the question, I arrived at the conclusion to go with a more orthodox method of burying the body. Then where would I bury it? It was a question related to where I would kill him. Of course, I wanted to keep my time in proximity to the body at minimum. With that in mind, I wouldn't want to dig the hole to dump the body beforehand, and to make the location of the act at all close together. The choice of where to plan the crime, that... I needed to be absolutely careful and thorough with it. He had to be somewhere nobody would witness it, and a place with hiding places for a sneak attack. I could dig a hole for the body right there. I go over the possibilities in my head of the various destinations our uncle would head to from Satoko's house. I imagined a map in the area in my head, and then I found a place that fulfilled those conditions so easily it was almost unbelievable. Hmm? A bit of a back road that went through the woods. I didn't think her uncle would go deeper into the mountains of Yagoichi on a whim. If it was going somewhere, he'd pass through these woods first. And nobody used this back way unless they had something to do at Satoko's house or one or two other places. And this path was fantastically ideal. As few people used it. I would wait for him in these woods. Would an ambush actually be possible? I went into the trees and tried really hiding myself in a few places. He was extremely quiet. Hmm. <laughs> you know, imagine if uh, we actually do choose this as the place where we would try and kill uh, the uncle, Tepe. Plot twist. It wouldn't actually be Keiichi who murders the uncle with his metal bat. No. It would be via an accident because of Satoko's traps. Therefore, you could say that Satoko is the one who killed uh, Tepe in this case. <laughs> Imagine. My senses could be sharpened here to their maximum amount. I didn't know when he'd come, but I'd wait right here for Satoko's uncle. I actually had some trouble coming to that decision. The question arose of whether I should somehow call the man out. Was there a risk I'd be taken by luring him here? That man made Satoko do all the shopping and errands. He seldom left on his own business. He wouldn't leave unless I worked out a plan to force him to, would he? And that's the question! Tomorrow was the Nawatanagashi festival. Would he go out for the festival or would he stay inside? He doesn't seem like a festival like Watanagashi festival type guy. Don't you think so? If he stayed inside, how would I drag him out of his house? Because given the past history and 
all that stuff. I don't think that this uncle had like any connections with the uh, with the people in Hinamizawa. I mean, there's the buddies that he hangs around with uh, to smoke and drink and whatever. But yeah, I don't think that there's anyone else out there for um, Tepe to have a reason to go out. Unless he were to go and try to score like another hit, like try to find like another girl to woo during the Watanagashi festival and, you know, try to run away with them, I guess. Which, you know, that would be an interesting option, like uh, have us uh, try to make Tepe like run away from Hinamazawa yes, yet again with another woman. Like, that would be an option to save Satoko without having to murder someone, but eh, it would take, it would probably take a lot of long time. That's right. When he makes Satoko go to the festival, Satoko would go to the festival. Meanwhile, I would call the man. This is the Okinomiya police station. We have the young lady from your house. Could you come and pick her up immediately? It didn't even have to be the police. This is the clinic. The young lady from your house has been injured. Please come and pick her up. Yes, that would work too. If I claim to be the police or the hospital, I told him to come and then hung up on him. He'd rush there trying to figure out what was going on, wouldn't he? That's the question. <laughs> Stop it. And just the other day, he was visited by a probation officer. It makes me think of that one... Uh, Andrew Garfield Spider-Man moment from one of the amazing Spider-Man movies. That's the question. Just hangs over, like, uh, just just uh, hangs on the rail there. And just the other day, he was visited by a probation officer. He wouldn't suddenly grumble about having to get his niece and go. You look like a child neglect. Mm. And that is a good point. I guess you could say that otherwise he wouldn't have given a fuck as much, but since uh, the probation officer came yesterday, he has to pay. The, he has to put like a good mask. Therefore, he would have to go. In that sense, is would you say that there is a silver lining to actually calling the probation officer yesterday, despite not having like uh, any good result? Is it like a? tiny bit of a miracle in our fucked up situation right over here of trying to murder Tepe. Uh, the man had no skills useful around the house. Satoko, his slave, was an essential part of his daily life. Eh. I guess that is true. Conclusion. If he went out to the hot festival, I would attack him here on his way there or back. Cause he is surely a lazy fuck. If Satoko is not there, then he has to do things himself. He would much prefer to... To have Satoko around, for sure. Otherwise... He would just force Satoko to just uh, stay where she was initially with Rika on the other house. And just leave him the fuck alone. If he was annoyed with Satoko's presence, well, then I not. If he went out to the festival, I would attack him here on his way there or back. If he didn't, I would lure him out by phone. If luring him out by phone was my first step, and I would be sure Satoko would go to the festival, leaving the house. It would be convenient if I could make Mion and take. Sa it would be convenient if I could make Mion take Satoko to the festival. She said her aunt was a district welfare officer. In other words, an ally to the probation officer. If I somehow incited Mion to take Satoko to the festival with her, well, being who she was, she'd use that fact and get her there. Satoko should just take a break and have fun at the festival with everyone. She should have a good time, reminisce on our former peaceful days. And when she went home, Everything would be over. Yeah. That would be the best outcome. Kind of reminds me of something from One Piece, but 
not the right topic for right now. That and I would be spoiling stuff, so I just wanted to say that. With that decided, I needed to dig a hole somewhere in the woods to hide the body. So it wouldn't stand out. So it wouldn't be found. Some place nobody would see me while I was completely exposed as I buried the corpse. I had wanted it to be close to a scene of the crime. May it actually grew farther away. Deep in the bosom of the black forest. The voices of the Higurashi were the only sounds here. Informing me that people shouldn't indiscreetly set foot in this place. Digging a hole with so many tree roots crawling around the ground would be far more difficult than I envisioned. I snuck a gardening spade out here in my back, but that wouldn't be enough. Still, as I looked into various approaches, I managed to find a place I could dig into. Tomorrow, I bring a real shovel from the storeroom at home. At home. I'd manage with that. Um, I don't know about this one, Keiichi. Okay, from the storeroom. Okay, I was reading it wrong. I thought that you were gonna buy a shovel, in which case you would leave evidence behind. I probably have to dig pretty deep down, but if I was slipshod in these efforts, I'd let a beginning occur. I absolutely couldn't allow that. Use any amount of time you need, and must spare any effort to early erase it. I glanced at my wristwatch. It was a little past six, and this was probably all I was going to get done here for today. I really wanted to dig the hole in advance tonight, even if it got dark out, but Mom would be upset if I stayed out that late. Bleh. I gotta go back home. Curfew is... is, uh... Is on right now. You wouldn't be good to come off as suspicious to my parents. I need to go back home and give Miona a call soon. I need to get her to promise Satoko to take her by tonight. After that, today would be done. Done. Would it be though? Was this really everything I could do to prepare her right now? I decided where to kill him. I decided how to kill him. I decided, of course, how to dispose of the body. I didn't decide on a time, but I would play that by ear. I didn't have a way to decide that. Was that really all? Was this real all right? Have I overlooked anything? Would this really go how I planned? After all this, worries started welling up one after another. It was only natural I'd be anxious, and this would be the first and last big job of my lifetime. I could not allow failure, and I had no experience, as this was my first time. And uh, it's not just uh, the first time experience of such a such an event, Keiichi, but what follows afterwards. Not only trying to hide it, like, for the rest of your life, but trying to live up with this kind of death. I didn't have the know-how, the knack, so it was only natural I'd be anxious. The dark clouds of unease told me doing nothing would be the easiest way. A truly pathetic suggestion to sleep in the game. Have you forgotten how miserable Satoko looked? From the outside, it may have looked like I was resolute, but deep in my heart, my knees were shaking loud. I never actually won a single fight to my satisfaction. Could I really kill someone? I may have been planning an ambush, but my enemy was large and far older than me. He had a scary face, and he looked like he was well accustomed to fighting. Could I have all the pieces before and after the murder were perfectly planned? But was the actual murder, the most important part, would have sold me the most? All my preparations, all my perfectly concealed machinations. If I didn't successfully murder him, they amounted to nothing. Yeah, it dawns on you, doesn't it? Quite uh, the heavy weight on your shoulders there, buddy. Damn it. After coming this far, you're pathetic, Keiichi Maibara. If you start to have these kinds of second thoughts, your true motive will be obvious. Let's go home. Go home and calm your mind. Tomorrow will be a juncture in your life, the likes of which graduation, employment, my bad, 
the likes of which a graduation, employment, marriage, and childbirth couldn't call a count. A day of murder to kill someone for someone else's sake. I was actually gonna go and um, read the log here anyway, because, again, Keiichi parallel theory right over here, with the monologue right over here. You're pathetic, Keiichi Maiba. The thing is, though, I, myself, give up the description that I've seen this far and made in my mind about when it comes to Satoshi, from the perspective of Rena, from the possible perspective of Shion, and definitely from the perspective of Satoko, is that Satoshi, he was a good kid. You know, maybe even a saint, I'd say. With possibly the exception of maybe him being the one who killed the aunt. Not sure, because if it was him, he would have killed Tepe as well, so that's still in the air. Again, parallelism between Satoshi killing like, like the aunt and Keiichi killing uh, the uncle this year. In a similar fashion. S but besides that, I would like to think that Satoshi was quite of a good kid, like a saint. But in this case, if he is the one who is saying that inside Keiichi's mind, you're perfect. If you start to have this kind of second thought, your ultimate motive would be obvious. Like he is agreeing with this, which, <laughs> you know, it could be possible. But I like to think that Satoshi was better than that, that he wouldn't agree with murder, like, no matter what, even if he tried his best to protect his sister and such, that he wouldn't agree with murder, so... Mm. Who knows? A day of murder. To kill someone for someone else's sake. With that day behind us, we would take it back again. Those mount spring like days we never thought would stop. Those safe, peaceful, fun times. I pedaled my bicycle hard to get back home. I felt somehow unsteady, like my body and soul weren't in alignment. A subtle shift between where the tips of my hands and feet were really were, and where I felt them to be. My vision was a little distant and narrow. As at the great barrier I risked my future life on, had nothing to do with me. An unreal sensation. How could I put it? Everything was so far away. Fine. Feel your knees permeate you, Keiichi Maiba. If that would turn your timidity into meticulousness and allow you to act with greater caution. And it's actually an important emotion to feel. And this feeling I had never went away that night. <laughs> 